Hello, welcome to Code Rhetoric with Tam Talk. In this segment, we'll be discussing uh, ICD-10 coding guidelines, sequela coding. Our reference for sequela coding is Section I, Conventions, General Coding Guidelines, and Chapter Specific Guidelines, Letter A, Number 10. Sequela, also known as late effects. A sequela is the residual effect our condition produced after the acute phase of an illness or injury has terminated. There is no uh, limit on when a sequela code can be used, and the residual may be apparent early, such as in cerebral infarction, or it may occur months or years later, such as that due to a previous injury. Um, examples of the sequela include scar formation resulting from a burn, deviated septum due to a nasal fracture, and infertility due to tubal occlusion from old tuberculosis. Coding of sequela generally requires two codes sequenced in the following order. The condition or nature of the sequela is sequenced first, and then the sequela code is sequenced second. Uh, the exception to the sequela coding guideline is um, an exception to the above guidelines are those instances where the code for the sequela is followed uh, by a manifestation code identified in the tabular list and title, or the sequela code has been expanded at the fourth, fifth, or sixth chapter levels um, to include the manifestation or manifestations. Uh, the code for the acute phase of an illness or injury that led to the sequela is never used with a code for the late effect. So uh, there are some references where you can dive into more detail. Our first one is sections I, letter C, number nine, which is the sequela of a cerebral vascular disease. Our second one is section I, letter C, number 15, which is the sequela of complication of pregnancy, childbirth, and the period period. And then our last one is, again, it's in section I, letter C, number 19, which is the application of the seventh characters for chapter 19. So as we move into our coding example, we're going to use diagnosis uh, deviated septum due to nasal fracture. So per the sequela guidelines, we should have two codes for this particular encounter. So in our first book step, we're going to look up the nasal fracture. So we're going to go to fracture uh, under traumatic and then go to nasal bones. Our ICD-10 code should be SO2.2. And then we have three placeholders that are blank because this is a seventh digit code. So when we code it to the highest specificity, our correct code should be SO2.2XXS. The X's represent the fifth and sixth digit placeholders because there isn't a specific number that should, uh, should be in those categories. But again, because this is a seventh digit code, um, we want to make sure those placeholders are filled. And then the S represents the sequela, as an S is a sequela. Okay. And so in our next book step, we're going to be looking up the deviation of the septum. So we're going to start off at our deviation, and then we're going to drill down to our septum. And keep in mind there are several septums uh, that can be documented or that can be coded, but we're going to look for the one that is specific to the nasal because, again, this septum, uh, excuse me, deviation of the septum is due to the nasal fracture. So again, we're going to start with deviation, then go to septum, and then we're going to go with nasal, and it's going to be acquired. Again, because the patient acquired this deviated septum due to the nasal fracture. And so our ICD-10 code should be J34.2 for the deviated nasal septum. So in our explanation, again, per the coding guidelines, there should be two codes that are required for this particular encounter. So based upon our patient's diagnosis, they have a uh, patient has been diagnosed with a deviated septum, which is our sequela, because this is the result of the nasal fracture. Uh, and again, due to the, na the nasal fracture, which is again, the acute illness or the injury. Therefore, S02.2XSS represents the primary code and J34.2 represents your secondary code. Uh, we know it's a nasal septum deviation, again, because the patient uh, had a nasal fracture. Now, depending on where you work or which side of the coding 
fence you sit upon or you caught upon because the S code is represents an injury or sequela um, it is appropriate to add the other additional codes such as the external cause codes what caused the nasal fracture or what activity was the patient performing that caused the nasal fracture exactly where did this occur like the location or place of occurrence and also was this uh, nasal fracture occurred because the patient was involved in a school activity with be it work activity or just uh, unspecified or unknown so if you coded the external cost codes you would still be correct but for this particular segment we're going to focus on the actual sequela codes so again we should have two codes so our coding tips for this segment is Number one, there is no time limit on when a sequela code can be used. I don't care if the injury or the sequela occur at birth, um, when the patient is 25 or when the patient is 50. However, whenever it is, uh, the sequela code is assigned to the patient or the patient encounter, um, it can be used at any time. There is no time frame in which that code will run out or expire. Also, coding sequela, again, generally requires two codes. And your first one should be listed as the condition or the nature of the sequela, which what caused the sequela. And then your second diagnosis is the actual sequela code. However, there are exceptions. So again, if an acute phase of an illness or injury that led to the sequela is never used when a code with a code for late effect. So again, just kind of go back and look at your guidelines that I referenced in previously on a previous slide, excuse me, just to make sure that you're in line with how the sequela code should be coded. And as always, remember to code to your highest specificity. So this concludes our segment on sequela coding. To learn more about medical coding, please subscribe to my website at www.abrahammedicalcodingcoachllc.com. And while you're there, please visit our blog at What's the 411 with Coding. To get in contact with me, please email me at abrahammedicalcodingcoach at gmail.com. Thank you.